Big Warhammer news over the weekend. Hold up, that looks like Barbie. It'll make sense soon. We've got double Warhammer news to cover. And exciting news regarding a certain role-playing game from the 80s. Ooh, some DN, wait. That's Ninja Turtles. Yes. Like you said, it'll all make sense soon. Plus, I sit down with Darren Press to chat about the upcoming Candela Obscura core rulebook and a trip to Cantrip Candles. All that and more on your official stop for all things tabletop. I'm Michelle Wynn Bradley. And I'm Joseph Johnson, and this is Tabletop News. Let's roll. <laughs> Thank you to today's sponsor, Dark Dice, an award-winning horror actual play podcast featuring Jeff Goldblum. Do you dare roll the dark dice? More on them later in the episode. It's Turtles All the Way Down with the re-release of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles TTRPG. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness is the remastered version of the 1985 source book, one of the first licensed TMNT products. This game is based on the original comic run, which has a much darker tone than the Ninja Turtles younger generations I've come to love. I've always felt more like a splinter anyway. Old, hairy, very scratchy, everywhere. <laughs> The team behind this re-release comes from original publisher Palladium Books, run by designer Kevin Sambita and Eric Wujic. The Kickstarter campaign for the re-release launches October 31st and includes backer exclusives like miniatures, dice sets, prints, and more. Michelle, can you say TMNT TTRPG five times fast? Hmm, you might have vocal warm-up for every episode. TMTTRPG, 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 That's fine, that was fine. Yeah, no, that was fine, that was fine, this is fine. So, so the Ninja Turtles live in the sewers. Yes. Where are you going with us? I'm sure they had wished they had their own dream house. Yeah. Okay, and who lives in their own dream house? Barbie! Woo, let's go, yes. Barbie has been many things, astronaut, president. Margot Robbie. <laughs> sure, and now a new competition wants you to turn Barbie into a grim dark monster. War Barbie 2023 is an online kit bashing competition where entrants mash together Warhammer minis and doll parts. The competition is hosted by mini painter Lauren Center. Sponsoring the competition is friendly local game store Cryptic Cabin, who will give out prizes for first, second, and third place. The answer Instagram hashtag WarBarbie2023 is already full of strange yet amazing creations. And participants aren't just limited to Barbie. Creative kit bashers have already crafted laser wielding cherubs, HR Geiger babies, and this head on spider legs that crawled straight out of my nightmares. No, I love him. You two can enter the competition by emailing your WarBarbie creation to the email below. The deadline for the competition is October 31st, just in time for Halloween. Can you say WarBarbie Margot Robbie five times fast? Of course, that's my other vocal warm-up every time we come to the studio. We're Barbie Margot Robbie, we're Barbie Margot Robbie, we're Barbie Margot Robbie, we're Barbie Margot Robbie, we're Barbie Margot Robbie! Are Barbies made out of wax? What? No, they're made out of plastic. Do you know what's made out of wax? Uh. Candles! Uh. <laughs> we sent Nathan to Cantrip Candles to explore how the power of scent can help immerse you in your gameplay with founder and owner, Christoph Vischer. I'm surrounded by candles and tabletop accessories here at Cantrip Candles in Hollywood, California, sitting down with Christoph Vischer. Christoph, what came first, the love of games or the love of candles? The love of games. I had to learn how to play D&D before I could figure out how to scent it. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I've always been a board game player. Like growing up, I was a Monopoly person, uh, Life, all those good vintage games. Yep. I got into more complex tabletop games like Settlers of Catan in college. And then post-college, I got into the whole hefty role-playing games and tabletop proper. It's funny, but I want you to be able to share it with us as well. The accident that sparked an entire company? Yes, the happy accident. Yes. I was DMing and I had a beer on the table and I was maybe gesticulating too much and ended up knocking over the beer. And I kind of was trying to just play it off, but like it was making this big mess. And I ended up being like, well, at least we're in a tavern in the scene. So like, it smells like beer. And it led to this light bulb moment where I was like, wait, that's a really good idea. Like scent could be really helpful for adding to the immersion. I'm all about the immersion in games. Like I'm playing music whenever we're playing tabletop. I try not to wear costumes, but I like a lot of tactile things. It was scent that I was like, wait, that's the missing piece that'll actually really help me get more into it. Don't miss the full interview and tour of Cantrip Candles on our YouTube channel. Now every nerd knows playing games is a serious matter. 
Games have the power to change the way we see the world and give us the tools to make the world a better place. Finding the best way to use those tools is the central theme of the annual Serious Play Conference, which took place at the Toronto Metropolitan University last weekend. Every year, the Serious Play Conference attracts game designers and researchers from a variety of fields and industries. Together, they discuss how to use board games and TCRPGs and everything from therapy and education to intercultural dialogue. Talks included a session by Terrell Page on teaching creative writing to high school students using collaborative world building. The students drew maps, created characters, and developed settings, then created a short story set in the world their group created. Another talk by Dr. Dmitry Babachenko showcased his team's work in cultural preservation. They developed a game to document and learn endangered cultural traditions. At the conference, they focused on their playtest centered on collecting stories of the South American Quechua language. So, the next time someone tells you it's just a game, tell them that rage flipping the Monopoly board is actually a critique on capitalism. I won, and you know it! When, what, I don't know what we were talking about. Game of life. Embracing the message of the Serious Play Conference, two new board games hope to educate their players and help them succeed in-game and in real life. First up is Campus Paths, an academic board game gamifying the college experience. Players take on the role of students balancing school, work, and social life, all while preparing for their careers after graduation. It's educational, it's not like grim, right? Like, no, 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 just, yeah, it's not, not you know, no, no real life stuff. But does the game have a card for crushing student debt? Yeah, that would make the game last 90 years, not 90 minutes. Campus Pass is created by Resolve, a game design research group based at the University of New Brunswick. Resolve hopes Campus Pass can be used by counselors and academic advisors to prepare students for the road ahead. It's set to be released after Christmas 2023. And for the medical students, the new board game Medicos sets out to test your medical knowledge. Medicos comes equipped with cards where players describe and guess medical terms, along with special question cards to keep things interesting. Medicos was developed by Namibian medical intern Rebecca Tokunjo. The game is available for purchase through Amazon. Imagine you're in surgery and then your doctor pulls out one of those cards. Yeah, that would be the, um, I'm, I'm professional. Unprof I'm professional. Yeah, unprofessional. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. If anybody's watching this, I'm hiding on the table because I'm listening to the very awesome, but very terrifying horror theme, actual play podcast, Dark Dice. Ah! Each episode is short, about 30, 45 minutes, so it's easy to get into. And they added combat to us, condensed and enjoyable, but staying true to the dice rolls. What is going on up there? They won over 20 awards and have had great guests such as Lily Pichu, Jasper William Carbright, and Jeff Goldblum. Their new season just launched, Shores of the Silver Throne. It's a story with a new cast about a terrible corrupting sound that affects all who hear it. Ah! Kind of like that. Dark Dice just released a Kickstarter. Now you can unleash terrors on your table with their expansion, Unnatural Horrors for 5th Edition, Necromancers, Monsters, Expanded Rules for Sanity, and more. Over 300 pages of content. <laughs> Every terrifying monster they encounter feels like it's right in the room with you. Like this monster right above me. Hey, Joseph. Ah! What are you doing down here? What are you doing up there? I'm just making my lunch. I brought it from home. Oh. Dark Dice. Dark dice. Yeah. Yeah. Hang in there, buddy. Thank Here, you. have a donut. I will. Dark dice. Wizards of the Coast announced they will be ending their distribution deal with Penguin Random House. Wait. Does that mean no more D&D books in bookstores? That's what many people thought when the news first broke. But WotC has since clarified that they are now changing their distribution plan in order to use the resources of their parent company, Hasbro. Through Hasbro and WotC's other distributors, D&D books will still appear on bookshelves. And it looks like Penguin Random House will continue to publish other licensed D&D titles like the recently released Lore and Legends and the upcoming cookbook Heroes Feast Flavors of the Multiverse. What does the multiverse taste like? Everything and nothing. So while they might not be distributing the real books, they will be distributing other D&D books like the cookbooks. Oh, good. Because how will I keep my plus five to cooking without all the cookbooks? Yeah, you just cook. Remember what you're doing? Yeah, you're right. I could just do that. Nerdy punks everywhere know zines and TTRPGs are a perfect pair. And now you can get both. Plus pizza. Plus One Experience recently launched RPG Zine Club, a monthly zine featuring original games by emerging and expanding TTRPG designers. Zine Club is designed to support new marginalized designers by giving them a sustainable pathway to publication. As of now, you can choose from the adventure zines with games exploring exciting fictional worlds or story zines with games that focus on characters, narrative, and story. This month's adventure zine is The Corrupted by Navarra Seek Jackson. The October story zine is a double feature of Spin the Bottle and Guys in Chairs, both by Super Dylan. Okay, that's all amazing, but what about the pizza? The what? The pizza. The pizzas you promised at the top of the segment. Oh, yes. 
the pizza. Yeah. You can get into the Plus One Pizza Parties with RBG Zine Club's Passport. It's members only. Oh, well, while I find out more about this exclusive pizza party, we've got a fantasy board to check out. Hello everyone, I'm Gisela Blugant and welcome to Fantasy Four. I'm bringing you the top four plays of the week. Now, I'm not talking about sports. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about our favorite actual play moments from this week. But first, a huge shout out to Backblaze for sponsoring this segment. Backblaze makes backing up and accessing your data astonishingly easy. Get started with a free trial of Backblaze today and start protecting your data at backblaze.com forward slash tabletop news. And we're off. Coming in at number four, we got a freaky Faye Day situation with the cast of The Dungeon Run, thanks to some audience interaction. Both swap minds. So I need you to act as Everly until the end of your next turn, and I need you to act as Hono until the end of your next turn. So basically, you got going on what I got going on with me. You now got going on with you. I'm inside of this old, very smelly lady. Um, <laughs> I got this long arrow, so I'm gonna shoot it, I guess. Okay. It's giving Zoe de Chanel. It really like, is. Really, wow, that would be really hard. I mean, I couldn't imagine switching minds with like another host and then having to like continue with the show. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I, don't, I don't know what you mean. Yup, yup, I'm ready. Uh-huh, yup. <laughs> Clip number three is straight to us from the crew at World Below with designer and storyteller Matthew Dawkins. We have uh, Dale and M currently being fed a mushroom stew being prepared in the same way that Link might in uh, Breath of the Wild. With a ding, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Diddly diddly ding, dubious food. Do, 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 Next clip, ask the question, can a creepy doll succeed a charisma check? I don't know what kind of person the dolls y'all been you know, playing with, but ain't nothing cute about them. Uh, creepy as hell. I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, it still requires a charisma save. I'm yeah. down with that, yeah, but not for cuteness. Oh, what is this? Because it's, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, Puss in Boots. It's all oh, big, cute eyes. Well, yeah, but it's, you're not throwing a beautiful cat at it. You're throwing a creepy porcelain doll. Now, I always say this. Porcelain dolls are cute until one comes to life in the cabin. You're staying at a big bear and chases you around the house with a butcher knife, so you have to burn down the whole cabin. I always say that. Coming in for our top clip of the week, we drop in on Realm Smith, who got a little surprise guest. You can also let the rat Torin know he can come out of the sewers. He has also been exonerated. For now. Oh, I knew it! Oh, I knew it! Is he, is, he, is he gonna surprise us? Is he, is he hiding somewhere? I've been really practicing my, my dwarven voice, like, the dwarven German. No? No? Okay. Well, I'm and those are your Fantasy Four plays for the week. Want to see your favorite AP clips on the show? Send them to our website, Discord, or tag us on social media. Our next story is a blast from the past. The original fantasy Warhammer will be returning in early 2024 as Warhammer The Old Worlds. I thought they came out with the new edition with the Space Marines. That is actually Warhammer 40K, the sci-fi setting. This is the fantasy setting where Warhammer began. Originally announced in 2019, Games Workshop released more details on the setting's return during their Warhammer Day celebration on October 14th. The Old World will feature new rules and miniatures for nine core factions, including the Empire of Man and the Wood Elf Realms. The chivalrous Kingdom of Bretonia took the spotlight last Saturday with a full preview of their forces. Continuing this trip down memory lane, Games Workshop will also be reprinting the original rulebook for a Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Originally, this reprint was only available at the Warhammer World events. <laughs> Wargamers who want to own a piece of history, Beaky Space Marines and all can place their orders on print-on-demand basis until October 23rd. When does War Barbie Margot Robbie Beastman Brayhurst come out? Yep, I'm gonna let you just leave that one to yourself. All Next my time, just lock running. it up. They're all and just good. Just keep it to yourself and Every just take hold I it perfect. in, lock it. Just no nets. Never. Moving from war games to card games, we have three exciting stories for our little TCG roundup. Up first, better check your Pokemon collection. Over 1,000 counterfeit cards were seized by police in Anaka City, Japan. The owner of this collection had previously sold four counterfeit cards in 2022 for over $1,000. Police arrested the man on October 4th and found cards in both English and Japanese in his collection. 
Um, it's catch them all, not counterfeit them all. But maybe it'll be harder to make counterfeits in a galaxy far, far away. Fantasy Flight Games has announced a new Star Wars trading card game called Star Wars Unlimited. The game will launch on March 8th, 2024 with over 200 cards in the first set. Fantasy Flight Games boasts an unlimited number of deck styles, unquote, with organized tournaments planned for both casual and competitive play. While a new TCG competitor enters the ring, a titan of trading cards makes a bold change. Magic the Gathering will soon be discontinuing their draft boosters and set boosters. These packs will be replaced with a new product called Play Boosters. Play Boosters will come with 14 cards and will be more balanced by color, unlike set boosters. Head designer Mark Rosewater cited marketplace confusion and inventory problems as a reason for the change. Play boosters will be put into circulation with the release of the MTG expansion, Murders at Karloff Manor, currently slated to release in early 2024. And now for some big Candela Obscura news. What? Darrington Press has announced the release date for the official Candela Obscura core rulebook. We had Xander sit down with lead game designer and writer Spencer Stark and Rowan Hall for a little segment we like to call Meet Your Maker. Today's Meet Your Maker is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. They are the site to find the world's largest selection of games, including new releases, out of print, rare, and collectible items. Use promo code TTN10OFF for 10% off your next purchase at noblenight.com. This week, you announced that the Candela Obscura Core Rulebook will be coming out on November 14th. What does this offer for the GM that maybe wasn't in the Quick Start Guide? I, an entire GM section. Oh, wow. Our big thing here was also integrating the mechanics into the world so that they don't feel separate. Just inherently, people get this idea that there is mechanics as the Quick Start Guide and then this adventure. And ideally in Candela Obscura, there isn't quite as much of a separation. Uh, you know, there's lots of guidance for GMs, but also there are like, hooks for how to run your sessions. There's examples of how we made sessions. Right. So that you can just look at it. I mean, really, they're like kind of four page spreads that are just mm -hmm. like, hey, here's a, here's an adventure. You can just read it for mechanics and get some of the lore and stuff. But if you pay attention to what's going on in the margins, uh -huh. there is a whole other story. There so. is an entire secret language in this book that Whoa. I cannot wait for people to decode <laughs> because it's a mystery book. So you've done two seasons of the Candela Obscura show with two different GMs behind the screen. Who's more menacing in this, Mercer or yourself? Matt and I talked about how our seasons were gonna be different. Matt had the Herculean task of uh, launching the series. Right. I had the, uh, frankly, t terrifying task of following Matthew <laughs> Mercer. You know, someone's gotta uh, do it. And I was really lucky that when I came in, they were like, just run it the way you run it. We knew we won season two to just like, get a little darker to show people the different ways in which the game could be run and show you that it's valid however you want to run the game. And actively, we all said, this is what we want to do. We don't want it to feel safe. Right. We want there to be, we want it to feel like we are not as in control. Mm -hmm. We've had two seasons so far. Can you give our audience any teasers for this ending? If I give one word, so yeah. no spoilers, but one word. Okay, okay. Uh, this final episode, I would say, is about sacrifice. Oh no! It is about <laughs> it is about thinking about looking out for the people around us and ensuring that the people that we love are protected. So I was behind the curtain during all of that, and there there is a moment when everyone behind the curtain like collectively gasped. I just remembered looking over at Max, our producer, like with my eyes wide, and he just went. <laughs> oh. It's a wild episode. Oh! Oh, marking my calendar for November fourteenth to get my hands on that core rulebook. Keep your eyes peeled on our YouTube channel to watch the full interview with Spencer and Rowan. And now it's time for news from your table. Our first news from your table comes from Gals and Goblins. They report, the party had to stay the night at a fishing village and were given two options. Stay at a quaint cottage at the edge of the village or old fish boy shack. Fish Obviously boy. They, they chose the, the quaint cottage. A reasonable choice, cause something seems fishy about that shack. It's not just the smell. Mm -hmm. Just as they were going to claim their lodging for the night, they found themselves in a bit of a conflict. Luckily, the village had a foolproof way to solve disputes in their culture. A fish race. A what now? A fish race, that's right. Each party member chose a giant fish, saddled up and got ready to race. Even their hydrophobic three foot tall tabaxi named Beans had to partake. Once the race started, the shenanigans began. Each student tried to stay on their scaly mounts and dodge the sabotaging spells being thrown their way. It was dicey for the party members right up until the end, but they prevailed. Beans was the real winner, overcoming his fear, and he did a victory lap around the bay, wiggling his butt at all the losers. Beans! 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 Beans!
And that's been the news from your table. We do this every week. So send us the news from your games using hashtag news from your table on the app, formerly known as Twitter, for a chance to be featured on our show. That's it for the news this week. Thanks again to our friends at Dark Dice for sponsoring today's episode. Dark Dice is available for free, however you listen to podcasts or at darkdice.com. So ask yourself, do you seek him? Thanks for watching Tabletop News, your official stop for all things tabletop. And thank you to everyone who supported our show. This is episode one. We can't believe we're here. We did a Kickstarter and our backers supported us, our sponsors supported us, our friends talked about us on social. Everyone just gave so much to this show and we are very grateful. So thank you. Catch new episodes of Tabletop News Thursdays on YouTube. And don't forget to ring that bell, like, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments which story was your favorite this week and let us know what you want to see on the show. I'm Michelle. And I'm Joseph. See, see you, you next week. week. Bam!